a new governor and new U.S. Senator, both Democrats, were chosen by Pennsylvania voters in 2022. And control the state house swung towards Democrats thanks to redrawn boundaries and voters energized by the abortion debate. Our Dennis Owens has a look back at the biggest political stories of the year. I'll be the next U.S. Senator from Pennsylvania. Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman overcame odds and obstacles to become U.S. Senator. It's been a real honor and it's been a privilege to work with each of you. He will replace retiring Republican Pat Toomey and give PA two elected Democrats in D.C. for the first time since World War II. This campaign has always been about fighting for everyone who's ever been got knocked down that ever got back up. Fetterman had no trouble defeating Connor Lamb and Malcolm Kenyatta in the primary, but had a stroke just days before that election. Critics insist he was less than forthcoming about the severity. As you can see, we hit a little bump on the campaign trail. That little bump, Fetterman later conceded, nearly killed him and kept him off the trail and out of sight for months. On the GOP side, Mehmet Oz. By the way, I endorsed another person today, Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania. With a Donald Trump endorsement, defeated Dave McCormick by less than a thousand votes. Oz and Fetterman had just one debate on this station two weeks before the election. And it got her paid. And it's Fetterman's performance was uneven. Republicans called it alarming, but it didn't matter to voters. Thank you, Pennsylvania. Thank you so much. She gave Fetterman a surprisingly easy five point win and Democrats a flipped seat in D.C. The next governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro. Josh Shapiro's win is the first time Democrats were elected governor back to back since the late 50s. I am profoundly grateful for this honor. Shapiro's God replacing term limited Tom Wolf. And what the pe people of Pennsylvania say, we will of course respect that. He easily defeated Republican Doug Mastriano by 15 points. Mastriano with a Trump endorsement easily defeated a very crowded GOP field in the primary. But Mastriano refused to debate Shapiro in the general, refused to engage with what he called liberal and biased media. He got just over 2 million votes, Shapiro just over 3 million. It means that we can finally run an agenda on the state house floor that's responsive to what Pennsylvanians want and need. Perhaps the biggest surprise on election night was Democrats flipping 12 seats in the state house and taking the majority by one. Republicans have controlled that chamber for 24 of the past 28 years. Do solemnly swear. Democrats hastily and secretly swore in Joanna McClinton as majority leader, but two resignations and a death mean their 102 wins was down to 99 people, less than the 101 Republicans, so. Please raise your right hand and place your other hand on the Bible. Republicans swore in Brian Cutler as majority leader. So who is the boss? A court is deciding that. And the normally pro forma swearing in ceremony on January 3rd will be a lot more intriguing when a Speaker of the House is supposed to be chosen. While Trump endorsed candidates lost at the top of the ticket, restless Republicans did flex their muscles. Appropriations Chairman Stan Saylor in the House, Pat Brown in the Senate, were defeated in the primary by candidates to the right. And Kerry Benninghoff bowed out of the fight for GOP leader. Also out, Senate GOP leader Jake Corman, who briefly and unsuccessfully ran for governor. And House Republicans ended the year by passing articles of impeachment against Democratic Philly DA Larry Krasner. The Senate set a trial date for January 18th. Krasner's fighting it in court. 2023 is shaping up as another headline-filled year. Dennis Owens, ABC 27 News.